We are here at Chiseled Life Gym. This is currently the home of USA Street Lifting. At the moment, this is where the next competition is gonna be held. Here training today, we got a competition for uh, Settled on the Bars, as well as a little bit of USA Street Lifting promo stuff. And so, I got a squat session. We gotta get squats out of the way, so let's run this. Never used one of these racks before, so we're gonna figure this out real time today. Get some reps in. All right, so probably need another pin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so amusing. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you got the hang of this. I've seen enough people do this before. Nice. Working sets, I got 110 on the bar right now, 110 kg. I need like 111, so I think we might slightly shoot over it. I think we can go, we can add 1.25, which is gonna be two. We might end up uh, doing like around like 250 or so for reps today, um, just based on the fact that I don't wanna undershoot. I wanna make, I'd rather overshoot in this case, to be honest, just because uh, right now we're well within the range of where uh, the weight's super manageable. And so better off to do a little bit more weight today than to do less. And we'll, we'll feel it out. We'll see how it feels. I'm sure it's going to be smooth and we'll just go from there. So we'll slap on some more weight and we'll get the working sets going. We're going 1.25 kg on either side, which is going to be about, I think two pounds or something like that. Let me see. Let me put this on and then we'll do the math again. It's the whole kg thing. I, I still don't have enough opportunities to train with kg to be super familiar with how the numbers add up. So we're going to do some quick math. One moment. Let's see if we can do the quick math here. So we got 20 plus 50, that's 70. And then we added another 40, so that's gonna be 110. Um, and then 1.25 plus 1.25 is gonna be 2.5, which is, call it about, let's see, 2.5, about five pounds. So then, so this is gonna be 248, three pounds over, I think, what we had on the program, so that's totally fine. We got sets of five, pause squats, four sets, so let's get going. All right, so quick update on how squats have been going so far. Three sets down, super smooth, everything's feeling really good today. I think maybe I didn't spend as much time warming up my hips as I would have wanted to. And so if anything, they're a little bit maybe on the tight side, but still feeling smooth. Uh, we got one set left to go and we'll knock that out. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Squats are feeling good, we're, we're getting there. I think the wrist wraps have definitely helped me out. Really working on also sort of feeling the pressure points uh, where I'm pushing off with my feet right now. The last set I was experimenting a little bit with a bit more forward lean in the squat. So slightly more of a hip hinge versus staying super upright. And I don't know, I feel like it might have been, it, it might have been a little bit better. And it's possible that uh, just because my lower back, if it's strong enough, that it'll sort of be able to deal with that extra hip hinge that I would apply. So I'm gonna experiment with that a little bit more, figure out um, what that's really about, maybe in this last set as well, and just kind of get a feeling as if I feel a little bit stronger, if my leverages are better with a slightly more forward lean, still really keeping solid planted on my feet. 
um, and especially driving through the heels, but with just slightly more of a forward lean. So we'll see. Also, we got some of the calisthenics athletes coming through. We're about to have the uh, competition is getting ready to go down. Everyone's sort of starting to warm up. A bit delayed, but uh, good stuff. We're still going to have a solid session. USA Street Lifting uh, promo stuff going on after this as well. So it's going to be a, a W day. inconclusive on that forward lane I was just talking about. I think as I got a little bit more fatigued, it wasn't as effective or did not feel as good. Uh, so I'm gonna just experiment with that again in the future and we'll see if it makes any difference at all. Um, but next up, we got back extensions and these are gonna be brutal. Then uh, Bulgarian split squats and those are always killer. So we just gotta grind through the rest of this workout. Let's go. <laughs> Legs have been nothing but brutal. Actually, squats were okay, but hip extensions were just wild today. 45 pound hip extensions. Low back pump's ridiculous. We have one movement left in this workout today. The competition's uh, going to start pretty soon, so everyone's getting warmed up for that. I just need to do some Bulgarian split squats, let the torture begin, and then that's it. best set of Bulgarian split squats to date. Uh, left leg was feeling solid, really good. All right, let's wrap on the workout. Time to move on to this battle. So let's get some cinematic footage. Let's go. Four, three, two, one. All right, so that's a wrap on the battle. Interesting one to say the least, and there will be a trilogy, so that's just going to get even crazier, but uh, we'll see how that goes. We're gonna do a little bit of promo filming now. This is eight. Okay, this is enough. We want to discuss our thoughts on Settle It on the Bars 3. It was a good routine, it was tough. The squats. It's pull crossing like everything. Oh, okay. Look. Step one. Let's go. Hey, bro. The table is getting loaded. Not gonna lie. Right, let's try this, man. At first, I didn't know what that even meant. Bro. Mmm. Quick bubble check. So over the past few sessions, I've been warming up with my jacket on. It's been kind of cold, and this really just helps me to trap as much heat as possible as I'm warming up, just so that it's easier to get the body warm, especially on push days. I find that if I am not super warm when going into dips, for example, then 
it just makes everything way harder. So today we have our primary bench day, actually. Bench has been going great. Um, so we're going to work up to 210 pounds. We'll go for sets of five and it should be a PR. So looking forward to some strong, strong work today. So before we start benching, there are three different movements that I want to do to just stimulate blood flow and to help warm my body up in order to just have a really strong bench today. As I was mentioning, watching some content from Austin Perkins and I saw a few of the warm-ups that he was doing for bench, which were different from those that I usually do. So first one we're gonna do are some lat pull downs because we need to get some blood flowing in the lats because there's a good deal of lat activation actually that goes down when doing the bench press. So we'll start with that. Next to the three movements on the list, pec flies, and it's not enough weight. We're not trying to get tired. We don't want fatigue from this. We are just looking to get some blood flow. So focusing on squeezing in the chest right now. Last movement to get some blood flow in the elbows. So. Let's talk a little bit about street lifting and what street lifting is in the first place. So that's definitely a word that you may have heard thrown around. I say it on like my channel and all the stuff that I'm posting as well. I would definitely give the simplified version of what street lifting really is. If you were to take calisthenics and power lifting and then smash them together, you have street lifting. So let's break that down a little bit more. So just like power lifting, where they have three different exercises and they have three attempts to do the total most weight that they possibly can in the span of each of those attempts and the totals are put together. Same thing goes for street lifting. So with street lifting instead, there are four movements. Those four movements are the pull up or chin up, the muscle up, the squat, as well as the weighted dip. Your total is put together to be able to rank you against the other lifters within your weight class. So in terms of the actual history of street lifting and how that all started, I would highly recommend going to someone like Eugene's page strength gene. I'll drop that. I'll drop a link actually for that in the description of this video. So street lifting in itself isn't even very new. This is something that has been popular in Europe for quite some time. And so over in America, we're really just getting caught up. So right now, Final Rep is generally considered to be like a world championship where all the best athletes will gather to be able to compete against each other. And so right now, USA Street Lifting is now putting together the official USA League. And so now we have an opportunity to be able to hone our skills and to get better and to compete against all the athletes that are actually in the US and then eventually bring branch out to be able to take our best athletes and go into Europe and compete against all of their best athletes. So super exciting stuff. Um, I am pushing to really become the best street lifter I possibly can be. Definitely looking to dominate as we go into the national championships for the US in May. And hey, you know, at the end of the day, this stuff really does take time to develop, but we're pushing, we're putting in that work. Um, so at the end of the day, we'll be able to rank somewhere and we're gonna make sure it's up there. So keep going. Come on. Ugh. pretty hyped on that one. Did not know how 210 was gonna feel. And as soon as I got onto the bar, I was like, hey, this is not that bad. Knocked out the reps. Um, they were fairly strong reps. I think a little bit of fatigue to the last one, but things felt tight. I will work on getting a little bit better with my leg drive in the next set. But um, as for that first set, knocking that down, that went out pretty well. And I'm super happy with that. I think that's a PR. I'm not entirely sure it might be. That's good stuff. Also, I hope that my explanation of what street lifting is was sufficient. At the end of the day, it's pretty much just, as I was saying, just the power lifting for calisthenics, where we're able to now take the strongest athletes in the calisthenics space and do one rep maxes in the, the exercises that we compete against. And I find it to be super fun. I came from a power lifting background, so it definitely works nicely with my interests and where I have strengths as well. So definitely looking to just go hard with this. Got to set at least one national record as we go into this competition coming up in May. So you know the vibes. We're about to grind. I'll let you know you can't stay hidden forever. <laughs> <laughs> And so it's a one rep max competition for dips, pull up or chin up, muscle up, and squats. 
Well, definitely cool to run into people who are a fan of the stuff that we're working on here. Gonna keep grinding to inspire the people. Dips are not not feeling the, the spiciest today, so we're gonna have to push through these sets. We'll make you count. You know, I actually just realized, being that I'm not having the best time with dips today, um, this is probably a great opportunity to really just talk about working through adversity. And so this is definitely something that I've had to fight with just within street lifting and training that I'm doing right now, just because I feel like the performance that I have day in and day out tends to have a pretty significant mental effect on me. So if I do have a good workout, if I do have a good training session, then all is well. But then if the training session is not the greatest, then I start to think, I'm like, whoa, uh, how are we going to, you know, sort of fix this such that we can perform at our highest level when it comes to May? And so at the end of the day, um, if we look at our performance at such a micro level, so the actual day to day, then we get caught up in the, uh, you know, the saying, you're, you're losing the forest for the trees or something of the sort like that. But looking into those details too deeply is going to cause you really to just overthink things and to worry unnecessarily. Because at the end of the day, like we are just in the process of aggregating our reps aggregating our sessions that we train in over the span of months, right? And so it's not like I'm competing tomorrow. It's not like I have one day of training before I compete. I have session after session after session after session. And so once those are all put together, that's when it truly is actually going to come to fruition and we see, you know, the, the fruit of your labor and all of that stuff. And so at the end of the day, this, this is probably a hot take, but I think that we should become excited for the bad days, the training sessions where things are just not going right and the weight feels heavy and it's just not ideal because those are truly the sessions that I think will build us the most to where we want to go. If I can go into a session and maybe I feel tired, I'm not feeling the strongest, my form is just feeling weird, but if I'm still able to move the weight that I have assigned for me for that day and I'm still able to get through the session and knock out all of the movements that I have to do and make sure that the reps are still quality even though it doesn't feel good, you know, then how much more can I do on a day that uh, everything's going right for me? So at the end of the day, I want to try and work on like reframing my mind and my perspective to my training sessions. And honestly, when things get hard, I should say, okay, this is good because we're going to sit in this, we're gonna grind through this and we're gonna grow in it. And so, hey, today might just be for like, I guess dips perhaps, just another opportunity to sort of just grind it and grow in it. I'm really going to try and focus on just dialing in my form right now as well because it's not feeling the strongest and we did just do some heavy bench which definitely takes a lot out of me so we're going to make sure this session counts today we're going to get it right and know that because of this grind like we're going to be better as a result strong rep it's going to be light Let's check the depth on that. Okay, cool, we were at 90. I'm not sure if it's gonna focus. Maybe in competition I would wanna go just a tiny bit deeper just to really seal the deal so we don't leave it in the judge's hand. not too bad. So it is currently 143 and I have not even had my first meal yet. So we are just on our way to the struggle for today in terms of getting our macros in, but it is what it is. Uh, good session. I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. So thank you to everyone who watched. If you made it this far, hopefully I was able to fill in some information about what street lifting is. And this is definitely my new sport of choice. It, it ties in very nicely with the powerlifting background that I do have, which is pretty cool. And so, yeah, we're working on this. We're going to make some progress and we're going to keep going. So, hey, come along for the journey. And I appreciate all the support everyone's been giving me so far. Um, even the compliments today for the 
the content and all of that stuff like that is super encouraging and i'm going to continue to push the limits and push what i can do to make this better and better um and so don't forget to uh use my link for process if you want to pick anything up there and link 10 at checkout so that you can get yourself a nice discount uh it helps me out as well too so i do appreciate all the support i think that's going to be about the end of this video so thank you for watching don't forget to dare to be great and i will see you in the next video